Welcome to Did You Know, a mini-series all about stuff you may or may not have known about the Bible to help you think about deep questions in a fun and informed way. Now, have you ever wondered how we got this book? Or who decided which books were to be included? Did God just deliver them up on a tablet like he did for Moses, or was something else going on? Let's talk about it. The books of the Bible are sometimes called the canon of Scripture. The word canon in its original language referred to a measuring rod. The idea was that these writings were a ruler by which the church and our lives should be measured against. Now, the Bible itself is made up of 66 books, unless you're a Catholic, which were written in three languages, Hebrew, Aramaic, and Greek. And these writings spanned multiple genres and centuries. Dr. Robert Plummer, professor at Southern Seminary, gives us a simple definition. He defines the Bible as a collection of authoritative writings. In other words, these writings, most of which began as oral traditions, were given unique authority by God and recognized by the Jewish and Christian communities. Whoa, 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 wait, wait. So how did the early church know which writings were inspired and which weren't? Great question. Well, let's start with the Old Testament. The Old Testament was written over the course of a about a thousand years, and according to some scholars, it was compiled in response to false writings and suspect teachings within the Jewish community. Having an officially recognized collection of writings would safeguard their beliefs from future false teachings or corruption. This sort of makes sense if you think about it. I mean, in Deuteronomy 18, God says that he will speak to Israel through prophets and that the Israelites should be wary of any false prophets who may claim to speak in his name. In Luke 24 and John 10, Jesus recognizes the existence of the Jewish canon and its authoritative role in the life of the Jewish people. For these reasons and more, the early church also affirmed the Old Testament is sacred. Now, what about the New Testament? Well, depending on who you ask, much like Canadian Thanksgiving, the dates vary. Many scholars believe that everything in the New Testament was written within about a 40 to 50 year time span during the first century. It's clear that what we read in the New Testament carried significant authority among the early believers. And this makes sense when you consider the authority Jesus gave to his disciples in Matthew 28. Passages like Colossians 4.16 and 2 Peter 3.16 also present the idea that what was being written by the apostles was divinely inspired. But unlike today, people didn't carry around Bibles in their backpack or on their phone. In fact, these Christian communities were so spread out that many of them didn't have access to all of the writings at one time. A copy of Paul's letter to the Romans might be found in one community, while a copy of Peter's letter might be found in another. Another community may have the Gospel of Mark as a guide, but nothing else. Because there was no internet or cell phones, communication was so slow, and if you thought dial-up was bad, just imagine having to deliver a message on foot. Now, we also have to remember that at this time, there were also several fake letters going around. Some documents claimed to be written by one of Jesus' disciples, like the Gospel of Thomas or the Gospel of Judas, but they were later debunked. Eusebius, an early church historian who lived around 300 AD, described a three-tiered system that the early church used to categorize these writings. There were books that were considered universally accepted, those that were debated, and those that were utterly rejected by the early church. And it helped that some of these early Christian leaders knew the apostles personally and may have been able to weigh their teachings against what was actually written. We can see from this whole process that the church took the job of sorting authentic from fake sources very seriously. No one wanted to put their life on the line for a false message. It was finally between 300 and 400 AD that the canon of the New Testament was officially collected and recognized. And it's also important to remember, though, that the early church didn't just pick and choose what made it into the Bible. They sought to recognize the divine fingerprints from the apostles or their close associates. And even though the canon was officially recognized by the 5th century, the works of the apostles were still seen as authoritative prior to that. Today, we can be thankful for the hard work our spiritual ancestors put in during a time of hardship and intense persecution. We can also be thankful that God didn't leave us in the dark. He spoke clearly through his followers and guided the early church to recognize those writings which are truly authoritative and trustworthy. You and I can be sure that this book contains the words of God that we can build our lives upon. And there you have it, a quick look at how we got the Bible that we know and love today. Now, if you learned something new, consider giving us a like and maybe even subscribing. And maybe check out another video on our Did You Know series. Take care.